Strong and severe thunderstorms rumbling across central and eastern Kentucky. I've got the latest warning straight ahead. Ten hours after a fiery crash killed a truck driver, investigators are trying to identify the victim and crews are cleaning up the scene. We're on Interstate 75 with the latest. And a busy weekend for Lexington police searching for clues in three shootings. Details on an arrest just announced in one of the crimes. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. Strong storms are firing up across the region, and some of them are severe. That's why today is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. You're looking live at downtown Lexington, where it's 80 degrees and a storm is headed our way. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking the storms on First Alert Defender, and Chris, we have a new warning. Yeah, we're getting warnings down to parts of central Kentucky, though, Jennifer, this is the only area of the state that isn't under a severe thunderstorm. Watch, kind of arcs around us, a very odd-looking watch into parts of western and southern Kentucky. The live first alert defender now picking up on rounds of strong and severe thunderstorms, as you mentioned, across central and eastern Kentucky. New severe thunderstorm warning out for this area that is, has the little uh, yellow polygon here. That includes parts of Washington County, Mercer County, down into Boyle County, Danville and Harrodsburg. We are included in this severe thunderstorm warning. That'll take us until 425. Strongest part of this storm is now cruising out of the Willisburg area, Mackville over toward sections of downtown Harrodsburg. A lot of heavy rain may flood some streets with this one as it rolls its way through. It's a very noisy storm. Winds may approach 50, 55 miles per hour at times. That little thunderstorm complex now extends a little farther to the north into Lawrenceburg, into Versailles, Nicholasville, and on the west side of Lexington. That is getting ready to make its way right on top of downtown Lexington coming up in just a matter of minutes. That will then roll its way toward the east, toward the Hamburg Pavilion area. A lot of the action today has been across southern Kentucky. This is an area I'm highlighting for the potential for some flash flooding. We're getting repeat thunderstorms that are roaming their way over the same piece of real estate, one right after another. But again, that severe thunderstorm warning that is out for north central Kentucky. And also, severe thunderstorm warning is out for southeastern parts of Kentucky into sections of Bell, Clay, Harlan, Knox, and Leslie counties. That'll go until 415. For this thunderstorm, it's kind of split into one across parts of Leslie County. Strongest storm is actually now into Bell County, just to the south of Williamsburg. To the southwest of that, we have additional showers and storms on top of Lake Cumberland, really coming down now for folks across the Pulaski County area. All of these storms, Jennifer, are going to continue to work their way through the area. Every storm will contain a lot of lightning and heavy rain. Some of them may produce some brief wind damage. We'll keep an eye on them. Thank you, Chris. Investigators are trying to identify the truck driver killed in a fiery crash on Interstate 75. A semi slammed into a wall of the Clays Ferry Bridge at the Fayette Madison County line just before 6 30 this morning, then burst into flames. I 75 southbound at the bridge just reopened within the past 30 minutes, but traffic is moving slowly. Sean Moody has the latest in our top story at four. Investigators aren't sure why this semi truck exploded or how its driver ended up going over the side of the Clays Ferry Bridge. Firefighters found his body several hundred feet below. Around 6:20 this morning, Lexington police said the truck was headed southbound toward the Clays Ferry Bridge. They say the driver lost control and hit a barrier. The cab caught fire, and witnesses reported seeing explosions. Firefighters got that fire out eventually, but there was no sign of the driver. Firefighters spotted his body several hundred feet below along the banks of the Kentucky River. They're not sure whether he was thrown from the truck when it exploded or somehow fell from the bridge. The fire department's special operations team had to use rescue ropes to get to his body. It was a very difficult hike to get to him, very rough terrain uh, to where he, where he was at. After a while after the crash, hazmat workers with the Lexington Fire Department were trying to contain about 100 gallons of diesel fuel that had spilled into the Kentucky River. They say they've since pulled their booms out of the water. They say that the water intake facility should be able to filter out any diesel that's left. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. The State Department of Environmental Protection was also called in to oversee cleanup. It was a violent weekend in Lexington with three shootings. We've just learned about an arrest in connection to a shooting at a strip club that injured two people. Lexington police arrested 21-year-old Jermaine Anderson and charged him with tampering with physical evidence and fleeing and evading. Police say they got a call of shots fired at Diamonds on Winchester Road around 3 Sunday morning. 
Two gunshot victims later showed up at the hospital. Police are also investigating two deadly weekend shootings involving the same family. Two brothers were shot last night on Whitney Avenue. One of them was killed. Then, a few hours later, police say a man who relatives identified as the uncle of the brothers was shot on nearby Charles Avenue. He died late last night at UK Hospital. So far, no arrests have been made in either killing. And police were there, responded within minutes to this incident, and will continue with those extra patrols in that area. Today, we're going to be reassuring people, knocking on doors, and talking to folks in that area as part of the investigation. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, you'll hear from some of those people living in the area about this recent wave of violence. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. Two women accused of murdering an elderly woman faced a judge this morning in Rockcastle County. Tabitha Howard and Kimberly Slusher both told us they're innocent. The couple is accused of breaking into 86-year-old Mary Hinton's home last week and killing her. Investigators say Hinton died of blunt force trauma. We'll have the details from Howard and Slusher's arraignment on WKYT News. News at five. We are learning more about the arrest of three people accused in a violent kidnapping in Breathitt County. Jackson City Police say the suspects bound the victim with duct tape and beat her up. She was able to escape and call for help. Police charge Sharon Campbell, William Gardner, and David Haddocks in the case. We'll have the latest on this investigation coming up on WKYT News at six. And with the race for the Triple Crown over, horse racing fans can now turn their attention to the next major racing event at Keeneland this fall. Official Officials with the Breeders' Cup and Lexington City leaders came together this morning to announce the schedule for the Breeders' Cup Festival. Aside from the racing, there will be an entire week of events leading up to the World Championships on Saturday, October 31st. You talk to any of the fans in Lexington and they are looking forward to it. Our ticket sales were sold out. People are just primed and ready for this event to come here. It's like the Super Bowl of horse racing. Well, we are going to have the details on what Breeders' Cups tickets are still available coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now stories making headlines across the nation at 4. Two inmates who escaped from a maximum security prison in upstate New York have sparked a massive manhunt. Authorities say the two convicted killers used power tools to break out of the Clinton Correctional Facility this weekend. Prison officials found the inmates' beds stuffed with clothes Saturday morning. It's believed they were trying to fool the guards as they made their rounds. The state is now offering a $100,000 reward for information leading to the inmates' capture. An oil spill cleanup continues on the California coast. Crews say 44% of the 96 miles of coastline affected by that leaking onshore pipeline have now been cleared. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife says the mostly sandy beaches only have trace amounts or less than 1% of oil. Cleanup efforts go from northern Santa Barbara County into Ventura County. The leaders of seven of the world's largest economies met for a two-day summit in Germany. They talked about everything from global warming to negotiations with Iran over its nuclear program. But as Craig Boswell reports, economic sanctions in Russia and significant challenges in Iraq dominated discussions. The G7 summit in Germany wrapped up with the traditional class photo featuring the leaders of the countries that comprise the group. Russian President Vladimir Putin was not there, but his presence was definitely felt. This is now the second year in a row that the G7 has met without Russia. Another example of Russia's isolation. The group extended sanctions against Russia because of its support of rebels fighting the government in eastern Ukraine, which President Obama says is an attempt by President Vladimir Putin to regain the glory of the Soviet Empire. Russia is in deep recession, so Russia's actions in Ukraine are hurting Russia and hurting the Russian people. Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi was also on hand, asking for support as his country battles ISIS fighters. President Obama says the U.S. is ready to help. We want to get more Iraqi security forces trained, fresh, well-equipped, and focused. But recent U.S. criticisms of Iraq's response during the ISIS attack in Ramadi have strained relations between the two countries. Earlier in the day, Prime Minister Abadi failed to get President Obama's attention for an informal talk, forcing him to awkwardly walk away. The two men did have a formal meeting already on the books. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. 
President Obama says part of the problem in Iraq is there aren't enough Iraqis to fill the training classes the Americans are willing to hold. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Another down day on Wall Street for the third straight session. The Dow dropped 83 points to 17,767. The Nasdaq and S&P also had losses. Apple has unveiled Apple Music, a new streaming music service, live radio station, and social network. The announcement came today at Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference. Apple Music will cost $9.99 a month, similar to several rival streaming music services. Apple unveiled new iPhone and Mac software. OS X El Capitan is the new version of Apple's popular desktop operating software. And Siri is getting an upgrade. Siri Proactive will know your location and habits and pull from your search history, emails, and calendar to try to guess what you want to know before you ask Siri. If you have an iPhone 5 and want to upgrade to an iPhone 6, you may want to head to Best Buy. The store is offering the 6 for just $1 if you sign a two-year contract with Verizon or Sprint. 100 million people belong to a frequent flyer program, but according to a new report, some airlines are better than others at honoring award travel. So how do you get the most of your miles? Matt Kozar takes a look. Steve Staraci travels around the country for business. He says using his frequent flyer miles for travel can be a challenge. You'll find, you know, that those types of seats aren't always available. You got to book early. A Consumer Reports investigation found the major airlines are getting a little better at honoring frequent flyer miles, but some companies are better than others. Southwest ranks number one for offering the most award tickets, followed by United, American, Delta, and JetBlue. Sean Brennan regularly flies Southwest. I think it's a great program because you can fly, you know, one way or you can fly round trip and, and you can use relatively few miles to get a quick trip in. Consumer Reports says frequent flyers should shop months in advance for awards tickets, book on the phone with a ticket agent, and never buy points. If you call up and talk to a ticket agent, they have more power, they're more skilled at looking through all the computer system and trying out different routes. Consumer Reports editor Jeff Bliskell says airlines profit when consumers don't use their miles. When you don't use your, your miles, it's called breakage. And basically that becomes revenue. The airline puts it right in their pocket and it goes right down to profits. But using those points the right way can help you get the most out of your miles. Matt Kozar for CBS News, New York. Southwest says customers were able to get back on its website this weekend after a slowdown during a major fare sale last week. Drivers are not getting much relief at the pump to start the summer travel season. The nationwide average for a gallon of regular is $2.76. That's up nine cents from this time last month, but down 91 cents from this time last year. Here in Kentucky, the average is a little lower at $2.66 a gallon. The lowest price we found was $2.36 at a station in Lexington, while the highest is $2.99 in Louisville. Other stations in Lexington range from $2.48 to $2.79. Thank you, Don. If you're trying to lose weight but aren't having any success, True Health Solutions may be able to help. Deanne Stevens is out and about today in Lexington with more. Hi, Deanne. Good afternoon, guys, from True Health Solutions here in Lexington, where we women are talking about burning fat. We're always talking about that, aren't we? And that's what they're hoping to do here at True Health Solutions. Michelle Miller with us. What is Burn Fat Lex? Well, it's a complete program. We do body wraps, we do sauna, we do whole body vibration, and we work with a doctor. So everything that we do here is doctor supervised and, it, and instructed by the doctor. Well, folks are probably wondering why I'm hanging out in my robe today. There's good reason for yes. that. Let's get started. So when someone comes in here to True Health Solutions, where do we start on this? We're going to start on whole body vibration. And this is an hour workout in 10 minutes. Wow. 
that? Exactly. So we're going to work individual muscle strands rather than muscle groups. It's also going to stimulate the lymphatic system, which is going to help with the sauna, which is going to help with the wrap, which is going to help with the program that we're going to put you on for inch loss and weight loss. Talk about getting those toxins out of your body and why that is so important for our own health. Well, exactly. We can lose toxins a couple of different ways, through the skin and through elimination. We, we can do cleanses of our organs, and we can do cellular cleanses. So the doctor works with you on organ cleansing your colon or your liver or things like that, and then the body wrap works on a cellular level to get rid of cellulite and toxins that are stored in the body that your body can't digest and eliminate. Did you say an hour workout in 10 minutes? In 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. Exactly. I want to back on there. I'm getting back on here in just a minute. Okay, so we move from that to yes. this area which is the sauna area, yes. right? We're going to move into the sauna. Uh, a patient's going to be in here for 10 to 15 minutes, just depending on what the doctor has prescribed. And this is to get the lymphatic system going and to get you burning calories. It is, it is not a hot sauna, so you're not going to sweat. We don't want to heat you up. It's infrared, which is very important with the cleansing process. And this is all, I mean, I understand blood work and all kinds of yes. different things are involved. So this is not a uh, snap your finger, you're yes. going to lose weight, magic kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. It's a whole comprehensive program. We teach you how to live ongoing. We're going to help you lose weight and inches and all that kind of good stuff, but then we're going to teach you how to live to keep it off. And then you said, I don't like the use, the use of the word diet. I don't either. No, because it never works. You know, <laughs> nobody wants to live on a diet. Nobody wants to live with restrictions. We right. want to learn how to live for our own individual body, and that's what we do. How do folks get more info? Well, they can go to True Health Solutions, and they can go to BurnFatLex.com, either one, whichever is easy, or call our office directly. We're happy to help them. Okay, coming up at 450, we are moving into the body wrap room. A lot of folks have probably heard of body wraps. This one's a little bit different. We're going to explain how it's different and what more. More of what they do here at True Health Solutions. I'm T.N. Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A new study suggests children under the age of four who receive general anesthesia for surgery have lower IQs and other cognitive issues. Researchers from Cincinnati Children's Hospital say more studies are needed to assess anesthesia's precise effects on the brain. Doctors warn the increased availability of legalized marijuana may have a rising negative effect on children. Data in clinical pediatrics found marijuana exposure among children ages 5 and under rose 148 percent from 20, or 2006 rather, to 2013. That's because children often swallow the drug. A new possible benefit of non-invasive prenatal testing for pregnant women. Researchers in Great Britain found it not only detects disorders such as Down syndrome in the fetus, but may also detect cancers in the mother at an early stage before symptoms even appear. Coffee and donuts delivered to your doorstep? Dunkin' Donuts CEO says the company is conducting a private test of a delivery service. He says Dunkin' Donuts will likely launch mobile ordering sometime this year. The announcement comes as rival Starbucks is testing an app-based delivery service in the Northwest. McDonald's and Chipotle are experimenting with food delivery in New York, and Amazon Prime is offering one-hour grocery delivery from New York City stores. Sweet Tooth lovers may want to head to Taco Bell. It's selling Captain Crunch donut holes in July. They're basically warm donuts covered in crunch berry cereal and filled with a milk icing.